incredibly excited that we have the chance uh, to talk about how we communicate all of this work to, to others. And so to explore this, we're going to hear about Food EDU. I'd like to, to welcome back Selena Ahmed of the PTFI and the American Heart Association, who also serves as the Dean of Food EDU. She will be joined in a few minutes by Kevin Cody, a Senior Program Manager with the American Heart Association and Food EDU, and Jackie Bertoldo, a senior curriculum manager with the American Heart Association and Food EDU. So, Selena, over to you. Let me just exit. Thank you. Hello again. Um, throughout the day, we've been hearing about the importance to translate the knowledge, the data, into ways that are accessible, translational, and operationalizable. And this is where Food EDU comes in. So the rest of the afternoon, we'll be hearing from our Food EDU team. I am delighted that we are launching our Food EDU platform today, as well as announcing our inaugural class of Good Food Fellows. Um, Food EDU was seated as a capacity strengthening arm of the periodic table of food initiative in recognition of the need to put food front and center in education. Throughout the day, as I said, we've heard this very bold vision of the periodic table of food initiative, the unprecedented data being generated on food quality. But for this knowledge to be translationable, it needs to be accessible. The PTFI thus seeded Food EDU as a pathway for building capacity and translating cutting edge research into knowledge that can inform data driven solutions. We at Food EDU are creating a global community of knowledge with our partners and growing ecosystems around food, integrating the importance of place based specificity, which you'll hear more about today with the globalized nature of food system challenges and solutions. We are providing training to ensure equity of a globally represented workforce that does not perpetuate existing asymmetries in scientific capacity. We are further working to develop educational offerings that break down traditional disciplinary silos and make knowledge available in actionable ways for empowering diverse stakeholders. At Food EDU, we seek to integrate diverse ways of knowing food, some that we've heard about today, including traditional ecological knowledge, multi-omics analysis, and doing so by bringing together speakers to develop curriculum offerings that have distinct perspectives, values, experiences, and approaches. Today, we'll be hearing from some of these speakers and members of our Curriculum Advisory Committee. Without further ado, I am delighted to introduce the leads of Food EDU, our amazing team, Kevin Cody and Jackie Bertoldo, to share more about our efforts to build capacity of future generations, the leaders of tomorrow, with food front and center in education. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Selena. Thank you everyone for having us here today. We heard this morning, this afternoon, about some incredible stories of what food composition can do for human and planetary health. And we see our job at Food EDU as bringing those stories to a broader audience to educate more people about what this work can do and how we can do it that bridges geographies and disciplines across the world. So I'll start by just saying a little about who we are. Food EDU is facilitated, similar to PTFI, um, by the American Heart Association and the Alliance of Bioversity in Seattle. Jackie and I are both with AHA that's been instrumental in establishing the courses that we'll be telling you more about today. We are supported by the Rockefeller Foundation. And so I think similar to the PTFI and it's being established to address some of these critical needs around food composition data and standardization, um, there was this recognition that educational opportunities needed to, to correspond to these breakthroughs in science that PTFI is enabling. As such, we are developing our curriculum in close collaboration with our PTFI stakeholders and ecosystem around the world, including from our centers of excellence. So why do we exist? Food EDU exists to address the critical global challenges that we've been discussing between yesterday and today, having to do with biodiversity loss, climate change, diet-related disease, 
things that we recognize have global implications, but also very local and specific and even human bodily differentiation as we move throughout this world. Um, we're also here to bridge educational gaps with scientific training, transdisciplinary systems-based approach to our education that could help bridge silos and bridge these uh, geographies and disciplines that often create barriers to understanding how um, the literacy around something like food composition can be promoted and enable folks to have conversation and meaningful dialogue. And, and such is the global coordination of what we're trying to do. Um, we really do see our work as bridging educational gaps, but also gaps that span geographies, disciplines, and professions. So what do we do? Um, primarily, Food EDU has two main foci. One is the Food Omics and Society course track, which we'll hear a little bit more about today. Um, this is a course track that we're developing in conjunction with the American Heart Association, their professional education hub, their e-learning platform. Um, so we, this entails open access online educational modules, global case studies that we'll share a little bit more about today, and lessons by leading experts in their fields, many of whom have joined us today as well. In addition to the Foodomics and Society course track, we have our Good Food Fellows program, which you've heard a little bit about. Um, this is research and professional development trainings to take this educational curriculum that we're building with Food Omics and Society one step further so that we can actually train people in the different omics-based platforms that PTFI um, and the tools that PTFI has developed have, have enabled. Um, we're also developing some, let's see here, oh, let's see. Um, research fellowships, and we see the fellows as individuals who are helping pioneer the science that PTFI is enabling in their respective centers of excellence. And in addition to these fellowships, we're creating engagement opportunities through the ability to network with each other. Um, we have an engagement platform, a discussion forum online, as well as other opportunities that we'll be creating for our fellows such that they can interact with one another, learn from one another, and share their experiences. There it is, it's a little lag. So how do we do this work? Um, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how we do this work with a story that just jumped straight into my animations. So, pretend you didn't see this already. So when we think about this question of what's in a banana, or how we know what's in a banana, on one hand we can think about something like the history and colonization of the Cavendish banana, the iconic banana. Um, but we can also be thinking about the biotic and abiotic factors in which that banana was grown, and the agricultural practices in which it was grown. And also the knowledge and the culture of the people who grew it, the labor that went into harvesting it. Let's see if this animation works. Ding. The big reveal. Ding. There it is. Surprise. Um, so the knowledge and culture of the people went into growing it. And we can think about these... Um, as representing the kind of planetary aspects of what we know about a banana. On the other hand, we can also be looking at the micro and macro nutrients. How banana is not just a banana, bananas are part of our diet. And what does it mean to be thinking about it in that holistic sense? And then lastly, the secondary metabolites that we've been talking about today. There's some study here from um, this image is referencing suggest that the bananas grown in closer proximity to more ecological diversity had more nutri nutritional diversity and higher nutritional qualities. So we could see here with the story of the secondary metabolites that these are all integrated. So we can't just be thinking about the bananas in relationships to our body and what's in a banana from a biomolecular perspective, but also what it means to think about it from a, a colonization perspective, the historical elements of the banana. And this is where Food EDU comes in. We see ourselves as bridging these gaps between human and planetary health to empower leaders across the globe working in food, agriculture, health, and nutrition to really help bridge those gaps and enable folks to have the, the, the language and the skills to communicate with one another to address those critical challenges we alluded to earlier. So, the other primary way in which we're doing this is through our course track, Food Omics and Society, and I'm gonna turn it over to Jackie now to talk a little bit more about that. Thank you so much, Kevin. 
Um, just on behalf of Kevin and I and Food EDU team, we are so thrilled to be here today at the Rockefeller Foundation uh, to celebrate the launch of our pilot of our first three modules of our inaugural course track, Food Omics and Society. So you actually see here a screen capture of the launch page for our first module titled Ways of Knowing Food. So Foodomics and Society aims to introduce to our learners interdisciplinary concepts and guiding principles that will orient them to apply foodomics to inform solutions for human and planetary health. And so as Kevin said, we're working in close proximity with the Periodic Table Food Initiative, but we've also aligned our educational approach with the Planetary Health Education Framework and a Sustainable Food System Signature Pedagogy to ensure that we're framing uh, the implications of the science w within the societal context. Um, and to use food composition and food quality as a lens through which we can examine and enhance the connections between food and people and the planet. And so um, here are our modules. As I mentioned, we're launching these first three as part of this pilot program, but we're actively working on the next set of four modules that will round out this course track and will be uh, available in its entirety next year. Um, so just to give you a little taste for how we're delivering this content, we've included just some screen grabs from our first module. And so here you see this is an interactive tab that's introducing the learning objectives for this module. Um, we see uh, in each of the modules, as Selena alluded to, we have these incredible um, documentary case studies that really bring the key themes of this course into the real world context and introduce that to our learners in a really engaging way. Um, we also see, uh, we have beautifully produced lessons um, from just an incredible uh, cohort of experts, leading global experts in food and nutrition and environment. Um, and so here you see our first lesson um, brought to our by our very own Chef Alejandra, who is here. We have uh, P.S. Rani, who is with the Northeast Society for Agroecology Support in Northeast India, um, as well as Nicole Redvers. vibrating. Does that mean something? Okay. Uh, uh, as well as Nicole Redvers, who is Associate Professor and Director of Indigenous Planetary Health at Western University in Canada. So that rounds out the, uh, the speakers for our, our first module. You might also recognize some familiar faces. Uh, Kevin and I make an appearance uh, throughout the course as kind of the facilitators who are helping to orient the learner and string together and connect key themes from each of our speakers. Um, and then here you see uh, a reflection tab. So this is really intended to promote both uh, introspection from the learner, but really in our vision, we want to see this uh, brought to life uh, in dynamic interactive discussion as part of the engagement hub that Kevin mentioned, as well as through partnerships with um, academic institutions all over the world who we will partner with to integrate this content into courses for credit for students. All right, and with that, I will send it back to you. Thanks, Jackie. So you've maybe seen some of your, yes, absolutely. Um, some of the booklets floating around of our Good Food Fellows, and I just wanted to give them an additional shout out here and recognize that our centers of excellence and the Good Food Fellows that they've selected are really gonna be the ones pioneering the research that PTFI is enabling um, and helping do the work that really sh demonstrates the value and the functionality of this kind of food composition research. Um, so here are some of the fellows from our different centers, just a few, a selection uh, from the Haveriana University, Ethiopian Public Health Institute, University of the South Pacific. And we're going to be doing with these fellows trainings that go more deeply into what the PTFI is doing with these different omics platforms, in addition to professional development opportunities. And the three key themes that we've um, discovered are going to be really most important for our fellows um, have to do with science communication, conducting community-engaged research, and also doing transdisciplinary team science. So really trying to build some of the professional development skills into their fellowship program. And lastly, I believe our university, uh, our National Institute of Medical Sciences and Nutrition, Salvador de Zubiran in Mexico. So um, before we wrap up, I did want to say 
one last thing um, to the question, when is the course available? Here we go. Um, it is available now. So we are piloting this course with users who include learners, um, educators, and other partners. So if you are a learner who wants to benefit directly from this course, if you're an educator that has contact with students and you believe your students might benefit from this course, or if you're a partner in another organization that has access to individuals who you think might benefit from a course like this, come see me. Um, this course is not publicly available. You have to come see me and get the card that's in my pocket for the link or send me an email at foodedu at heart.org. Um, but we're really excited about this and we're really looking forward to getting feedback in this pilot phase. Um, and also say lastly that you know, the future of Food EDU is bright. And we're looking forward to developing additional course tracks that include things like food quality and planetary health, um, possibly into areas of regenerative agriculture, and really thinking um, more broadly about how this kind of educational platform that PTFI has seeded could support other research initiatives that allow us to bridge the gap where formal educational opportunities um, maybe are being outpaced by the innovative research conducted by people like those in this room. So the last thing I'll say is just, uh, never mind, bye. No, <laughs> thanks everybody, thanks. Um, big thank you to the American Heart Association who's really made this educational platform possible. Um, the Periodic Table of Food Initiative clearly for supporting this work and the Rockefeller Foundation. Um, and then I'll also want to give a big shout out to a number of people who are in this room um, who are part of our advisory committee and that includes Alejandro Cifuentes here from the Laboratory of Food Mix in Spain, um, Daphne Miller here from UCSF, and uh, Bruce German, who I'm looking around the room, Bruce German, you all know very well by now. Um, Carlos Ferron Guzman from the Planetary Health Alliance. Natalia Vasquez Manjares from the Institute of Mexico, whom we, we heard from earlier. Um, and uh, Joe Tomei, who's also here with us today from the CGR network. So, um, and those who were unable to join us include Anna Larti, a University of Ghana, and Tim Griffin from the Friedman School up at Tufts University. So we have an amazing crew of people who are supporting this project, and we're really thankful for all of you um, being here today and for those who are supporting us. So. Thank you. And now, we get to show you a beautiful video um, of promotional trailer for Food EDU. We are standing at the crossroads to decide for better or worse for our food systems. Following the path of transformative action now, we'll put our food systems on the path of sustainability. There is an urgent need to address critical challenges related to human and planetary health. And while food is at the nexus of these challenges, it can also be the source of the solutions. El consumo de estos alimentos tradicionales puede eh, ayudar a que esta situación cambie. Es también es necesario para que esto se, se logre que, que exista educación alimentaria nutricional. The future of food education will span diverse disciplines, geographies, and settings to build the next generation of food systems leaders and bridge gaps between innovative research and educational opportunities worldwide. Welcome to Food EDU. Food EDU is a global educational platform empowering leaders across the food system to improve human and planetary health. Through our online courses, webinars, and fellowship program, we are bringing the tools of scientific discovery together with democratized education to enable everyone to share in solving the world's most urgent challenges. We are delivering transformative education through engaging storytelling, global case studies, and by partnering with leading global experts. Hello, my name is Fabrice de Klerk. I'm Anna LePay. I'm Alejandra Schrader. My name is Chris Benier. My name is uh, Pius Rani. I'm Selena Ahmed, Dean of Food EDU. We are elevating community heroes across the food system. And we are building the capacity of scientists, policymakers, and practitioners to generate collaborative solutions. Generating solutions to address the complex and interrelated challenges of the food system will require us to transcend disciplinary boundaries and engage in diverse ways of understanding these challenges and finding solutions to address them. Leveraging agricultural biodiversity for sustainable diets requires the coordinated and collaborative efforts of the sectors of agriculture, health, 
environment and education. Please join us as Food EDU advances educational opportunities to nourish people and the planet.